Welcome back to the MTGP episodes. As always, I'm your host, Guy. And my guest today, Dan Edwards, is no stranger to the MTGP shows, as March 7th will be his fourth outing, and he'll be fighting for the world title belt in Wolverhampton against Greek fighter Alexandro Milos. We dig into his fight preparation and the new scientific lengths Dan is now going through to ensure he's in the best physical condition. We discuss the learning lessons from his last loss to Mikhail Benator, training under the tutelage of the legendary Damien Trainer, about fighting in Thailand and the game plan for Alexandro. We're also sponsored by Mindful News, online courses for fighters on how to deal with nerves, performance anxiety, but more importantly, how to increase performance in the ring and enjoy the process. For more information, visit mindfulnews.uk and give us a follow on Insta for cool tips and advice. First of all, Dan, thank you so much for, for doing this. Really appreciated it. Okay. But just with, um, you know, 54 fights, 44 victories now, um, you spent a lifetime dedicating yourself to this sport. And with a fight coming yeah. up on the 7th of March in Wolverhampton, for you, is this business as usual? Or are you going in this feeling a bit more excited? Are the expectations a bit higher? It is business as usual, but I grew up about, I don't know, three, four miles from Wolverhampton. So I've got a lot of local support and obviously a lot of people that I know will be going to watch. So yeah. obviously there's, there's a lot of pressure to perform well. Yeah. And do you find that as your career progresses and the more fights you get, you're defending your title, does do you feel like the expectations are increased every time and that people are expecting more from you yeah i guess so yeah and, and yeah. You... i mean the, the last time i fought on the muay thai grand prix it wasn't a great performance to be honest so i want to try and redeem myself a little bit like you said you're no stranger to the mtgp you fought there three times already this will this will yeah. be your fourth do you, do you yeah. feel comfortable fighting there do you feel yeah, it's a great show. I mean, feel welcome, they look it? Yeah. really well. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's on the USC fight past and that now. So it goes out to a big audience as well. Yeah. I feel, yeah, with with the uh, UFC fight pass, you know, with your perception of how the popularity of Muay Thai is at the moment, the fact that, that the UFC is, you know, is part of the the fight pass then, you know, what are your what are your thoughts there? I guess it it's like, obviously, it's obviously filmed, professionally filmed. So, and it boosts the, um, the fighter's profile. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, anybody, anywhere in the world can go onto the UFC Fight Pass yeah. and just watch fights or fighters or whatever they want to do. Yeah. So it's, it's good for things like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to defending a world title, the idea of raising the belt at the end, does that add, you know, significant pressure to you? Um, it does, but I try not to think about that, if I'm honest. I mean, for me, it's just a fight, whether it's a world title or not. I've, I train the same every time. I always train hard. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have done a few extra little things this time and I've got some professional help with other areas. So, I mean, hopefully it all comes off on the night. Right. So let, let us go back to the last MTGP fight, the, yeah. the Mikhail Benator yeah. fight. Um, great fight, by the way. You know, I was ringside. Oh. I was, I was, it, I was, it was for three rounds. <laughs> <laughs> it was for three rounds, but, you know, I watched it back again last night. Right. I just wanted to get, you know, your take on it, your thoughts on it and, you know, how you think it went uh, and why you lost. Um, I just gassed. I mean, I changed a few different things with my diet and basically I messed it up after the way and it was it was nothing to do with um, the preparation for the fight. I prepared really, really well for the fight. I felt great going into the fight. And then something just happened. I got to the end of round three. I just had nothing left. I just gassed. I mean... Mm -hmm. He, I was all over him for the first three rounds. I mean, he, he was nearly out in the second. Yeah. There, was a, there was a few mistakes as well. I mean, the second round was four minutes long as well, which didn't help. Oh, really? Yeah, the <laughs> it was round, four minutes long. It was about three minutes fifty long, wow. which doesn't help. Yeah. So, um, but at the end of the day, I still gas. So, because no excuses. Yeah, well, because the first, I mean, the first round in particular, I mean, it was a perfect display from you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you connected yeah. with everything you threw. I mean, even the you know when you threw him over, the elbows, the body shots. Yeah. It it seemed to be work. I mean, he didn't have an answer for you in the first couple of rounds. No. I mean, I was matched with him again for this show. Mm -hmm. um, that was the original matchup, and then he's he's pulled out for 
I don't know what reason. I think he, he was traveling to Thailand or something. So he's pulled out. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he pulled out months ago. So it hasn't really uh, changed anything for for my training. But um, hopefully that fight will come around again. Yeah. Hopefully it will. How, how many five round fights have you had? I mean, approximately. Um, what you mean, A class fights? No, I'm talking about you know three rounds versus the five rounds. You know, oh. you know, just as far as the championship rounds are concerned. Um, I, I, I've never fought on the Muay Thai Grand Prix three round. It's always been five. Yeah. Um, probably about ten fights in total, and the rest have all been uh, three fives. Yeah. But as far as yeah. your your gas tank and the other five rounders, you know, it, it, has that traditionally been an issue for you? No, no, not really. I mean, I mean, the first fight I had with Adrian Garlanta mm-hmm. on the Muay Thai Grand Prix when I won the title, I mean, that was a tough fight. But I think that was just because he was so big mm-hmm. and he kept trying to march me down and march me down. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I fought the Italian guy, I can't remember his name, on Andreas, that was on the Muay Thai Grand Prix in, uh, that was in Birmingham, actually. I felt really good yeah. then. I just, no problems. And then obviously with uh, Michael Benatar on the last one. Yeah. Just all, it just all fell apart. And was that a particularly tough one to come back from? Because he, you know, like you said, fourth and fifth rounds, he delivered quite a few significant blows. No, I mean, it never hurt me with anything. I mean, I, I was kicking and nearly falling over. I mean, he should have stopped me, really. Mm-hmm. He should have put the pressure onto me and tried to stop me. But um, I, heard, I wasn't hurt at all really? okay. after the fight. It was just... Just pure exhaustion. I mean, after the fight, I was being sick and yeah. I felt terrible, yeah. What have you done differently then, I guess? You know, what are you, what are you doing now as far as preparation for another five-rounder, for another world title? Defense? Well, I've got, I've got a, a proper nutritionist on, on side now um, from John Moore University in Liverpool. Um, he's one of the top guys for combat sports. So we've been up doing all the testing. We've done like uh, Dexter machines, done uh, metabolic rates, done VO2 testing. And he's uh, created a, a, a diet that's tailored for me. So I know exactly how many calories to eat per day to get the weight off. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, I mean, I'll, I'll only have to lose probably one or two kilos maximum on fight week. Yeah. Well, I'll do it the day of the weigh-in. So, mm-hmm. And then obviously we've got a, a plan then to rehydrate and um refuel basically yeah. so tell me yeah. what's it like um you know under the tutelage and having damien trainer you know in your corner you know? yeah really good i mean not only in the corner i mean in the gym mm-hmm. as well obviously he's been there and done it so he's got us training flat out at the minute me and uh the other the other guys because we've got another guy fighting on the show damon as well yeah. so i'm training with damon in the daytime damien on the night time or more, more vice versa yeah so we're, we're both training really hard for this fight. Yeah. And obviously with Damien training us and, and watching us and making sure we're running and making sure we're clinching. And it's been a very hard fight camp. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, obviously a legend in the sport, you know, ha- had a really interesting and exciting comeback fight, you know, after a big time off under the, at the MTGP. Yeah. Do you sit down with your coaches and watch tape? And do you, you know, because... Um, not really. You mean of the opponent? Well, Al- Alexandros Milos, you know. Yeah. Um, I've had a quick look at him online. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, I don't know, there's probably a handful of fights on there, but um, he just looks very strong. Yeah. Forward, 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 very aggressive and and strong hands, basically. So I think I'm just going to have to try and play it careful with him for the first couple of rounds. Mm-hmm. See, what, see what he does. Yeah. I know he's from, I know he, well, I know he trains at a good gym in Thailand as well. I think he trains at Pitch and D in Thailand. So mm-hmm. he's obviously got a lot of experience as well. I mean, his records, I think it's 33 wins, four losses. Mm-hmm. So he's no mug. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's, he's going to come to fight. He's, if he's fighting for a world title yeah. in the UK, he's going to be coming. Mm-hmm. He's got nothing to lose, has he? Yeah. Well, what's your experience with um, going out to Thailand and training out there? Well, I lived on in Thailand on and off for, for years, to be honest. Um Probably had about 20, 30 fights in Thailand. What, Phuket sides? No, uh, I fought Old Lumpini Stadium, New Lumpini, Rajdhanan, fought Max Muay Thai, wow. Muay Thai Warriors, 
fought on some big shows out there. Super Muay Thai. I won the Super Muay Thai four-man tournament out there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you pick up any of the language? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> Not much. Don't ask me to do any. <laughs> yeah. And what would you say were your takeaways from having experienced, you know, a significant time out there? Um, I guess it's the, uh, the intensity of the training and how to... Hey, you'll start, say, I don't know, say four or five weeks out from the fight and you're, you're gradually up the training, up the training, up the training. Like now it's, it's my last full week of hard training. So I know this week I've got to put everything into it. And then next week, probably Saturday, Sunday, I'll start tapering it off a little bit then. Yeah. And obviously trying to get your body to recover. Yeah. So can you describe for me um, a typical week for you, you know, especially in a, under in a fight camp? How does that look like? Right. Well, I mean, I've only ran today. I mean, yes, yesterday we ran six miles, came and we did uh, five rounds on the pads. Mm -hmm. But uh, today I've just ran. Tomorrow I'll run. Um, and then it'll be the fighters class at the gym tomorrow night. So okay. normally five, six rounds on the pads, uh, clinch work and sparring. Yeah. And then Wednesday running pad work again. Thursday will be running and um, and the, another fighters class, yep. and then on the weekend I might try I might recover a little bit on Friday. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, and then weekend it'll be the track. So I'll go Alexander Stadium on um, Saturday, it's just the Athletic uh, Stadium in Birmingham, and we'll go there. We'll do sprints, I don't know, 400 meters, 800 meters, just high intensity training. To be honest, on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And how significant is mindset for you? You know, um, um, in the training period leading up towards the fight and, you know, come fight day itself. Are you very much in your head? Not really, you know. I try and black it out, to be honest. I try and just focus on the training rather than, rather than worrying about the fight or thinking about the fight. Mm -hmm. I rather just concentrate on the training concentrate keeping the weight down keeping everything as smooth as possible yeah and then obviously you worry about the fight fight day mm -hmm. i mean otherwise you end up thinking about it or yeah. can't sleep and all things like that i'd rather just blank yeah. it out if i'm okay. honest yeah all right so let's go let's go way back now so um why did you get into fighting and you know what were the you know what were the events that um, led to that a guy i used to work with um he used to train at K-Star, I think he might have even introduced Damien to, uh, to K-Star, to be honest. They went to school together. And I don't know, we, we were obviously young lads going out drinking, partying all the time. So uh, I just wanted to try and get away from it a little bit and um, do a bit of fitness. So I, I used to do a lot of gym stuff like weightlifting and all that sort of stuff, a little bit of running or whatever. And um, it's just, just get bored of it, don't you? So he recommended that I went there and tried this place. And I went there and I just kind of got addicted to the sport, to be honest. I mean, just started going two, three times a week and then it was four times a week. And then uh, there was a couple of interclubs coming up in the gym or a local gym. So did that, did, did pretty well. And then at the time, the, we were doing the AKA, you know, the amateur kickboxing events. Yeah. And we did a few of those. And then it just kind of developed from there, to be honest. Yeah. And yeah. so... Were there challenges growing up or perhaps difficult situations that that got me into Yeah, into maybe boxing. rough areas, rough neighborhoods or, you know, a difficult upbringing um, or, or was it? I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say uh, a difficult upbringing, but it was a bit of a rough area where I grew up, a lot of trouble and things like that. But um, you know, it was nothing to do with that really why I got into Thai sure. boxing. I just went there purely for fitness, yeah. to be honest. Mm hmm and just to stop me going out every weekend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell me, what are some of your other hobbies and passions, you know, apart from, apart uh, from the Muay Thai? I do a lot of mountain bike riding, mm -hmm. whilst obviously I've, I'm not doing it at the moment because if, if you come off or anything like that, um, it's too easy to pick up an injury. But um, we do a lot of off-road uh, mountain biking. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when I'm not fighting, I'm still going to train because the guy I train with on a Saturday, he's got his own gym. So I go over there and we, we normally train a little bit first and then we'll go out on the bikes or, mm -hmm. or different stuff like that, yeah. But at the moment, it's just pure Muay Thai at the minute. Yeah. 
So what's your day job? Uh, HGV mechanic. Yeah. Yeah, like heavy goods. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How would you describe your fighting style? Um, I guess I'm a clincher, but I also like. Mm, I guess I'm a kicker more than anything, more than more than a boxer. I say I'm more of a kicker and a clincher. Yeah. Um, maybe try and march them down a little bit and then get into the clinch and try and try and rag them up a little bit in the clinch, if I'm honest, yeah. Yeah. And if your friends had to describe you outside the ring in a couple of words, well what how would they describe you? Um, not sure to be honest. I mean I guess I'm, a, I'm I guess I'm a quiet person. Keep myself to myself. Um I mean, it seems kind of the opposite for someone a quiet person that keeps themselves to themselves to then be, you know, a, a Muay Thai world champion. It, it, it well, seems, yeah. seems like a bit, do you know what I mean? A bit of a... Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't say I was cocky or anything like that. I mean, I, I don't normally even tell people that I am a boxer, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I don't know how they describe, describe me, to be honest. Um, just, just a genuine guy, I guess. Mm -hmm. no, I like, yeah, I like I mean, that. I like that. Just honest, honest, genuine guy. Yeah, I know you're a bit of a family man, but if I was to ask yeah. you, you know, what is happiness for you? Um, I guess being on holiday, relaxed, just with my wife or whatever, just chilling or. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know, like a Saturday afternoon around your friends' days, all having a barbecue and just having a good time, I guess, yeah? Well, you know, with this big fight coming up and we're just kind of kicking off 2020, what are your goals for this year? Uh, obviously, win this next fight coming up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying, I'd, I'd like a rematch with uh, Michael Benatar. I don't know if he'll accept it or not. Um, that, would be a that would be an awesome bloody fight. It that would. Lit, yeah. it, it was matched for this. It was matched for March. Yeah. I mean, when he agreed, it I was like, "Yes, come on." Mm -hmm. But um, obviously, I don't know. He just said he, he was going to Thailand. That's the reason he's pulled out. Yeah. And then, if I could get another world title at the end of the year, or even uh, fight on one championship, if that if that was to come around, yeah, that's good as well. Yeah. And looking beyond that, you know, what are your, I guess, career aspirations? You know, looking out in the next couple of years. Do you think that far ahead? Not really, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm old now. <laughs> I'm 33 now, so I've probably got another couple of years maximum mm -hmm. at it. So obviously, I'm, I'm just after the big fights now, to be honest. I mean, there's no point fighting mm -hmm. just local people for, for for no reward, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done all that. Yeah. I'm at the end of it now where I want to try and get the big fights or the big money fights or the on the big stage. Yeah. All right, then. Well, again, thank you so much for doing this and, you know, for, for yeah, taking no the time. And, you know, we usually end this, you know, with the fight on the 7th of March. Any words or any, you know, for your opponent? What for my opponent? Yeah. Is that Alexandro Milos, you know, might be tuning in. You know, do you do you usually <laughs> like, you know, like to, to say any words or, you know, what, what's no, your I'm style? I'm not going to trash talk him. I mean... I'm, I'm just there to fight the same as he's there to fight, but um, you know what? I've trained hard for this. There's, I've cut no corners. You can't believe that. No corners have been cut. So I'm bringing my A game. I hope he is. Yep. I'm on a local show where I grew up literally three, four miles down the road. All right. So I'm coming there to fight. All right, then, mate. Well, like you said, if your friends were to describe you, you say genuine, you know, and I think that that's an awesome quality to have. So, yeah. um, wish you the best of luck for your upcoming fight. Thank you. And, um, you know, congratulations on the on the long career that you've had. Thanks. And, you know, to all our fans up there, you know, give him a like and a follow. And, um, you know, stay tuned. We'll be following up um, after the fight. And, and again, all the best, mate. Yeah, all right, then. Thank you. All right.